And I don't know what's going on. Here we go. All right. So let's zoom into this thing. Uh, that's a little too zoomed in. Sorry about that. All right. So let's uh, let's look at number one here. Okay. Now, number one and number two, you guys are going to notice they're already solved for y. That's what we call slope-intercept form, okay? Um, and uh, I do want to remind you guys of a couple little things. I know I said we didn't have to do notes, but let me just put this up here um, just in case, okay? If it says less than or greater than, it's going to be an open dot, okay? In other words, you're going to do a dot like that. Um, whenever I'm sorry, not open dot, dashed line. When, I'm I'm thinking of something else. This is going to be a dashed line. Okay, so your graphs will look something like this. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, it's solid line. Okay, so lines will be nice and solid. There's no dashed in between. Uh, also recall. If it says less than or less than or equal to, you shade below, R right? Just think less, so down. So less than, less than or equal to, shade below. If it's greater than or greater than or equal to, you're gonna shade above. So these are just notes from before. You guys should have these already, that's not a problem, but I'm just, just a real quick reminder. Okay, because this is what we're going to be doing today. Just that instead of just drawing one, we're going to draw two at the same time. Okay, now this is where I would tell you that I learned that using a blue highlighter and a yellow highlighter is awesome, and you'll see why. Okay, because when they cross each other, it's going to turn green, and that's your answer. So it'll naturally show you the answers without you even doing anything special. Okay, so let's do uh, question number one. All right. So I'm going to use uh, red for the top equation or inequality. I'll use blue for the bottom one, okay? That way we, we know which ones are which. So these are in the easiest possible way for us to do, okay? They are in slope-intercept form already. So for the red one, I'm going to start at 2. So here it is, starting at 2. And my slope is 1 over 2, right? The half. So I'm going to rise up 1, run twice. So 1 up, 2 over. Okay, now since it's a less than or equal to symbol, that means that the, that the line is going to be nice and solid. And there you go. I'll try my best to make straight lines. That one doesn't look too bad, so that's good. Now let's do the blue line. Okay, so the blue line um, is uh, starting at negative 3. I know I haven't shaded yet. I always wait to the end for the shading. Uh, negative 3, and then my slope is 2 down, 1 over. So 2 down, 1 over, that's right here. So I'm going to draw that. It's a less than or equal to. That means it's a solid line. Okay. All right, so again, um, this works great with color pencils too, but it's so much easier when you have highlighters, okay? Um, you could also do it with normal pencil too. Uh, just just kind of make it extra dark where they both cross each other. But let me show you here. Um, why the the red graph? Okay, the red graph says less than or equal to, right? So I gotta I gotta shade below. So here it is, shading below, and I'm gonna shade everything in there. Okay, it can just be messy. Doesn't matter. Um, but there you go, okay? So there's that one. Now I'm gonna get my blue highlighter. For the blue line, it says y is less than or equal to. Again, less than or equal to means below, so I'm gonna shade below it, okay? So notice what happens when I go into the yellow marker area. So if you see all that green that just popped up, that's my answer. Notice I didn't do the green thing, like it did it by itself, okay? Because I 
I join two different colors that actually create another color, right? So <coughs> the yellow stuff that you can see is not the answer. The stuff in blue is not the answer. The stuff in green is the solution. That's where they both meet each other. That's where they both collide when they shade over each other. So that would be my solution to question one. Notice I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to write any sentence. I don't have to label any points, nothing like that. Draw the pictures, shade it in, and wherever they cross each other, um, that's gonna be your solution. Okay, so that's number one. Now let's look at number three, because I, I, don't, I don't even want to do number three. Let's look at number four. Because number four, the equations are not set up for us. So we're going to have to do that ourselves. Okay, so I'm going to kind of move this to the side so I have some room to do number four. So I'm going to write uh, x plus 2y greater than or equal to 2. And then in blue, I'm going to write 5x plus 2y greater than negative 6. So I'll start with the red one, and then once I'm done, I'll graph that one in red, and then I'll do the blue one. Once I'm done, I'll graph the one in blue, okay? So i got to solve for y, so let's move the x over, okay, by subtracting it on both sides. So I get 2y greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. And then divide everything by a positive 2. So dividing everything by a positive 2, I get y greater than or equal to negative half x plus 1. So now I have it in the right form, okay? Um, so I'm going to start at plus 1. And my slope is down 1 over 2, negative half, right? Down 1 over 2. So I'm going to try my best to draw a line here that says greater than or equal to, so it has to be solid. So there it is. There's my line. Remember, I'm going to wait to shade till after, okay? Sometimes shading early and then you try drawing another line, it kind of mixes stuff up, so it's always best to wait. Now the blue line. i got to solve for y again. So I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. So I get 2y greater than negative 5x minus 6. Now I have to divide everything by 2, a positive 2. So y is greater than negative 5 halves x minus 3. So I'm going to start at negative 3. And then we run into that problem where we run out of room, right? Because my slope says to go down five times and twice over. But I can't do that, right? One, two, I'm kind of, I'm not going to just guess, right? So whenever we run out of room, we just move in the opposite direction. So this slope says to go down five and to the right twice. So I'm going to go up five and to the left twice. So one, two, three, four, five, left twice right there is my next point. Notice how it's a y greater than, so that means that this thing has to be a dashed line. All right, now I'm going back to my red line. I'm getting my yellow highlighter here. It says y greater than or equal to, so that means I have to shade what, above or below for greater than or equal to? Above, right? So let's Let's get this uh, yellow highlighter here, and we'll highlight this area. Again, this works, it doesn't work so well with crayons, I've tried it. Color pencil works pretty well. Um, you know, highlighter obviously. Markers I think may not work, I'm not sure. <coughs> All right, the blue one says Y greater than y greater than so that means i have to go above it above would be this side right here so you'll notice just naturally the green color starts to pop out even though i'm using a different color highlighter so there's my answer
Now this next one, I'm gonna do it without highlighting. I'm gonna use like if I were using a pencil, okay? I'm gonna do the work like if I was doing a pencil. Are we okay with number four though? Just solving for y and then drawing it and highlighting. Okay, you always gotta make sure that your lines are either dashed or solid <coughs> and uh, you wanna be checking your shading as well. Let me do number five. Uh, I'll do number six. You guys can do five. And then we'll go over to the other side, which I think has an absolute value, if I'm right. Yeah, it does. So we'll work on those. So let's do number six. Now, I'm going to do this like if I was just using a pencil. So obviously, I'm not going to have different colored for lines or anything like that. Okay, so... Um, we're going to start off with 4x minus y greater than or equal to 1, okay? And then next to that, x minus y less than or equal to negative 2. So let's start off with the left side equation, 4x minus y greater than or equal to 1. So I'm going to move the 4x over, right, subtract it. And I get negative y greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 1. But I need to solve for y, so I have to divide everything by a negative 1. But when you divide everything in an inequality by a negative 1, what happens to the greater than or equal to sign? This, i got to flip it, right? It becomes a less than or equal to sign. So I get y less than or equal to 4x minus 1. So let me go ahead and start graphing this. I start at negative 1. I'm going to go up four units, so one, two, three, four, and one over, so right here. It says less than or equal to, so my line is going to be solid, okay? So a nice solid line. As straight as possible. I messed up, it's okay. All right, my next line, let's solve for it. So I'm going to move x over, so I get negative y less than or equal to negative x minus 2. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And again, if you divide everything or multiply everything by a negative number, you got to flip that symbol. So this becomes y greater than or equal to x plus 2. Okay, so I'm going to start at 2. And then I go up 1 over 1, right? Because my slope is 1 over 1. I'm going to write it there. They normally don't write it, but it's a 1 over 1. And it's greater than or equal to, so it's a solid line. So here we go. All right. So here's a part that gets a little confusing because if you're using pencil, now you have two lines. And if you remember which one was which, you got to kind of double check, right? So um, the what I always do, and I, you don't have to do this, but this is what I would do whenever I did my work. I used to label my lines like this. That way I knew which one was which. Okay, again, I'm showing you how to do this. If you're just going to use a straight pencil, nothing fancy, then try to do this so you don't get yourself lost. So the y less than or equal to 4x minus 1, less than or equal to means below. So it's going to be here. So notice how I'm going to, I'm going to shade it, okay? This is the way I used to shade my stuff. I didn't actually color it in. I would do these like diagonals that were per perpendicular to the line. And right now you'll see why. Uh, let's look at the other line here. It says y greater than or equal to x plus 2. So I'm going to do these perpendicular to this line. And even though they're not going to cross by a lot, but you'll see right now there's this little area where they kind of cross mat hashed here look check it out it's right there where they kind of touched each other um, with the shading so all you have to do is when you see that just color it in okay just color that in as best you can and that would be the answer that little tiny triangle section 
So you can see how a highlighter makes it a little easier to do this, right? You don't have to worry so much about like, okay, where, where are they crossing or are my lines not going in the right direction and is there something wrong? If you use a highlighter, it's a lot easier. But the only problem with the highlighter, it's hard to erase. Actually, that's wrong. Um, there are highlighters you can buy that you can erase. I don't know if you guys knew that, but my daughter just bought one. I was amazed. I, I didn't know they can do that. But you can erase highlighters now. But I'm sure that marker costs a lot of money. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, the, you could buy them if you wanted them. Any questions on this one? Again, uh, using color, stuff like that might help, okay? All right, so let's look at number eight, and then we're done. You guys will have four problems for homework. You can work on them in here and probably get them done. Uh, but number eight, <clears throat> you're going to notice one of these graphs looks pretty easy to do, y greater than or equal to negative 2. Um, I can actually graph it right now. I'll do this one in red. So negative 2 is down here. And uh, it's a y type of equation. That means it has to be flat greater than or equal to, so it's going to be a solid line like that. Now it says y greater than or equal to, so I'm going to have to shade above it, but I'm going to wait, okay? I'm just going to wait. Now the other graph is an absolute value graph, okay? Remember, normally, I'm going to erase this right now, so don't do it, don't, don't draw it, but this is the way it's supposed to look. If you guys can remember, I told you that there's a point that's super important for this whenever you graph, and that's the origin, okay? So I'm gonna erase the other stuff. I'm gonna leave the origin there. Okay, now, you see the negative in front of the absolute value? That means that instead of looking like a V, it's like an upside down V now, okay? But, what does that plus 3 inside of the absolute value make me do to that point? Go to the left how many times? Three times. So I'm going to move it over here. And now let me erase the original one. And then all I'm going to do is draw the absolute value upside down because of that negative in the front. Okay, so now that I've done that, I am going to shade, okay? So for the red line, I did this one in purple, sorry, I forgot to mark it. For the red line, I gotta shade above it. So here we go, shading above the line. It's gonna get a little messy just to hurry up the process, but here you go. Okay. Now, for the purple line, it says y greater than, so I have to shade above it as well. So here we go. This is the above for that line. So everything up here everything there So you can see where the answer is supposed to be. Okay, so yeah, there's a little chunk of yellow that did not get covered, and that's okay. And there's some blue areas that didn't get covered, that's okay. The green is what's important. That's the solution to this problem. Notice both of the lines that I drew were supposed to be solid. If you look at number uh, seven, one of them will be dashed, the other one will be solid, okay? And there's going to be a, a line and an absolute value as well. So you guys work on, uh, let's see, you guys have to do number seven. Is it all the odd numbers? Oh, no. So number two and then three, five, and seven, okay? So two, three, five, seven, that's your homework for today. All right? So go ahead and work on that right now, or if you got to finish up your homework and get that done before you leave, go ahead and do that. Whatever you feel you need to do. Um, we do have 12 minutes.